Hello, in this video, I want to make a connection between a general equilibrium analysis and a partial equilibrium analysis. When we talk about general equilibrium, that's when we do an analysis of the, uh, you know, the economic system as a whole, rather than just looking at a single market. Now, of course, we're going to still have assumptions. So usually we would assume that the entire economic system is made up of two sectors or two industries. But nevertheless, we're thinking about the entire economic system as a whole when we do our analysis. And this recognizes then explicitly that a change in one sector impacts the other sector. All right? And the obvious or the most obvious model anyway is the production possibilities frontier model, the PPF model. When we look at partial equilibrium, Instead, then we are, in fact, doing the analysis of a single market. So we're looking at one industry, one sector, one market in isolation. And there is no direct connection between that market and other markets in the economy. And the most obvious example for partial equilibrium analysis is the demand and supply model. All right, so in the next uh, slide, I want to talk about uh, what uh, the, an analysis of international trade looks like in a general equilibrium, and then make a connection to the same kind of analysis in the partial equilibrium. Okay, so here we have two diagrams, and obviously they are very complicated. It looks confusing, so I'm just going to go through first to explain what's on this slide here. So first of all, in the top diagram, so if you're looking at the top up here, this is our general equilibrium analysis. And we have the quantity in the B industry, quantity in the A industry on the axes, and this, this blue uh, curve here is the production possibilities frontier. So we have our PPF like this. And then these black straight lines are three different relative prices. And I'm going to talk about the, di the differences in a second here, but we have you know one price here, relative price of A1, relative price of A2, and relative price of A3. And then the red curves here are the indifference curves. So this one represents the utility of one, two, and three. And then down here, we have our demand and supply diagram. Of course, then we have the quantity of A in this, uh, on this axis, and you can see that they're going to be lining up with each other over here, and that's what these green lines are supposed to represent. Uh, then, of course, we have the price of A. Now, strictly speaking, we usually write PA here, but whenever you look at the demand and supply diagram, it's really a relative price. So when you look at this, PA is really relative to all other prices, and if our model has only two industries, then the relative price of A must, of course, be relative to the price of B. So we could have written it like this, but I'm just going to leave it like that for now. And, uh, and then over here, I'm going to do some welfare analysis and a welfare discussion. All right, so uh, let's just uh, start thinking about this uh, slowly here to, to know what's going on. So first of all, I, I want to recognize that uh, we start out at a point where we have autarky. So there is no trade. So when we have no trade, then the relative price of A will be PAPB1. So if I were to, you know, we can see that price up here. Sorry, right here. And you can see that in equilibrium, you know, where here we have the moderator transformation, the slope of the PPF is equal to the relative price, is equal to the moderator substitution, which is the slope of the indifference curve. And that would give us a quantity QA1. So I'm just going to write that here. So we have a QA1. And that quantity can be extended down to our demand and supply diagram. And therefore, we can see here that PA, PB1 goes with our quantity A1 here. 
All right, so, uh, so this will be where we would start out. And then, when we talk about international trade, I would open up the economy for international trade. And uh, this, uh, this country that I have in mind right here has a comparative advantage in good B. So as trade opens up, the relative price of A is getting lower because they had a comparative advantage in B, and therefore they have a comparative advantage a disadvantage in A, so they were, their relative price in this country was high compared to the rest of the world, and therefore when we open up the trade, the relative price decreases. And therefore, we would see this country uh, specializing, not completely, but they will move production towards the B good and away from the A good, and therefore their production would be QA2, and we can see that down in the the lower diagram that this would be where, where they would uh, be producing. Of course, the good thing about international trade is that your production bundle, so the, you're producing here, but you don't have to pr consume at that point. You can consume wherever your preferences would like you to consume. So therefore, our consumption quantity will be uh, much higher. So uh, I'm going to write the consumption quantity in, in red here. So uh, in terms of what we consume, it would be QA2 in red over here. I can write that over here too. And uh, of course, uh, the difference uh, would be uh, the difference between what we consume in this country and what we produce is, of course, imports. So you can see the imports being the distance between QA2 in red and QA2 in black over here. You can, uh, you know, we could, we see that over here too. So the distance from this point to this quantity over here, that will be the imports. And of course, if we do general equilibrium, then this distance over here will be the exports that pays for those imports. Notice we can see that in the PPF diagram in a general equilibrium analysis, but in the partial equilibrium, we only see the imports. We only see the imports over here. All right, so something that we often will talk about is what happens if you have free trade and then you impose an import tariff on imports. Well, what happens then is, of course, that uh, the price of imports is going to be higher, and therefore the relative price of A, and remember A is being imported, the relative price of A is going to be higher, uh, which is why it's going to go, you know, the relative price is higher, so the, the price line here is becoming steeper. So compared to the free trade relative price, the import tariff relative price will be steeper, Still flatter than Artarchy, but steeper than the, the free trade one. And of course, when relative prices change, we will change our behavior. So, you know, we're going to produce slightly less of our export good and slightly more of our import good. So QA3, I'm going to write it down here as well, uh, is less than QA3. Well, it's greater than QA2 in terms of our production. So we, we, we start producing some of the import competing good. Another effect is, of course, that uh, with this new price, we're going to change our consumption. And we're going to have to cut back our ability to consume. So we're going to be uh, consuming less of this good because it's now more expensive. So consumers are going to consume less of good A, while the domestic producers are going to be consuming, I mean, producing more of good A. And the impact is, of course, that our imports, which used to be this much, this distance here, the imports will now just be this distance over here instead. Okay, so now we have the impact of this import tariff and trade and art are key in our diagrams. And I just want to do uh, talk a little bit about welfare impact. 
So uh, in terms of our general equilibrium, uh, when we had autarky, so when there was no trade, so I'm just going to write autarky here. You know, the way we would measure our utility would be by our indifference curve I1, which represents some kind of utility U1. All right, when we have free trade, we can see that we were able to reach a higher indifference curve, so we would reach I2, which is, uh, you know, representing a utility U2, and U2 is ranked higher. We only do, in, you know, there's only a cardinal, uh, I mean, there is no cardinal ordering here, so it's just a rank ordering, ordinal. And then with a tariff, we are only able to reach indifference curve I3, and uh, therefore, which represents U3, and we can see here that uh, in terms of preferences, we would have that U2 is better than U3, which is better than U1. All right, so uh, if I'm going to do welfare analysis in our partial equilibrium analysis, I would have to write some uh, some letters. I'm going to do some letters here. So I'm just going to put some letters into my diagram. So uh, this whole area is going to be A. This other yellow area is going to be B. The blue area is C. This yellow area is D, E. F is all the red. And G is going to be this area. And I guess I could call this small area over here H, the white one. All right, let's just think about the welfare in terms of no trade. So if we have our art or key, we can see that consumer surplus is the area below the demand curve, right? Above the price that they are paying. So consumer surplus will just be A. Producer surplus is the area above the supply curve, below the price that producers receive, and therefore producer surplus is B, D, H. And of course, with no trade and no tariff, there is no government revenue, and therefore total surplus is A, B, D, and H. All right? So... You know, sometimes we want to compare autarky to free trade, and therefore we'd have to find consumer producer surplus and government revenue and then total surplus for free trade. With free trade, we can see, first of all, well, I should have written these ones. So here, the relative price with free trade is PAPB2, and therefore we can see that there's a big increase in consumer surplus, so the area below the demand curve above the new lower price would be represented by the letters A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and producer surplus is less, so producers are worse off here, uh, so they only get H, and of course with free trade there's still no import tariff and therefore the government revenue is still zero. But total surplus, if you add up the surplus for both consumers and producers, is A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. And if you were to compare it to free trade, to I mean free trade to autarky, you can see that we gain uh, C, E, F, G, which is why we would say even in the partial equilibrium analysis, the free trade is better than r -tar key. All right, with a tariff, we have this intermediate relative price. So I'm going to write PAPB3, which is this red line in the middle. And we can go through the welfare analysis again. Now consumer surplus is uh, A, B, and C. Producer surplus is D and H. Right, you can probably, you can see that. So, you know, consumer surplus is this triangle over here, and producer surplus is this triangle down here. Uh, we haven't really talked about government revenue, but here we're finally gonna have it with a import tariff. 
um, you can see that uh, you know the difference between the free trade price and the uh, tariff price will be the tariff so that will be you know some t and then that per unit import tariff is going to be applied to our import which is from qa2 red to qa2 black here actually that's qa2 qa3 i think it is there it should be three sorry about that and therefore the uh, the government revenue is the area of this rectangle which is tariffs times imports which gives us this uh, rectangle there so government revenue is f and if we have add all of those up to get the total surplus is a b c d f h uh, if we compare it to free trade it is better than I mean, it's worse, and if you compare it to autarky, it's better. So, in terms of autarky, we would gain. Uh, you can see we can just check these. So, A B D H versus A B C D F H. So we would gain C and F. But in terms of uh, free trade, we are losing. E and G. So with a tariff, we can we would conclude that a tariff is uh, certainly worse than free trade. And but free trade is a lot better than autarky, and uh, you know an import tariff is in between those two. All right, so this will be the welfare analysis we could do, and uh, and that concludes the connection between the general equilibrium and the partial equilibrium analysis.